Hello, Pioneers. On today's agenda, we'll be going over calendar and events, behind the scenes, student life, highlight interview. My name is Sam. My name is Audrey. And welcome to your Pioneer Report. Pioneers to calendar events with me, Alex. And me, Jeremy. All right, here's some stuff going on. Jeremy, tell them what's going on. Well, from November 9th to the 30th, Mount Whitney ASB will be promoting the Friends of Tulare County Donation Drive, which is a donation to help the elderly that were affected by COVID-19. So during this time, be sure to follow ASB on social media to be informed about the situation. Any contributions help those in need, so please donate if you can. Also, on December 11th, there's going to be a virtual talent show. If you have any questions or you want to join, you can contact ASB by either emailing them or any of their social medias. And on that same week, we are hosting a Tranquility Week to de-stress students and help them cope with distance learning finals. Every lunch period during that week, there will be an event to help de-stress the students. Also, next week is our last week of school until vacation for Thanksgiving. Also, after that, Finals are coming up, so we should probably be preparing for those. Yeah, I should too. But, you know, on another note, we, um, the presidential election just happened, and it looks like Joe Biden is our president now, so that's fun. All right, well, that's some events going on this month. Back to the anchors. Thank you so much, Jeremy and Alex. I can't wait to see more from ASB. Now on to behind the scenes. Public places are now different since COVID started. Some places are still closed, but most places opened up. If you want to go to a restaurant, you have to eat outside. All places require you to wear a mask and stay six feet apart. Please wear your mask to stop the spread of COVID. That's so cool to put up tents like that so people can still eat out safely. That sucks though if it rains because it'll be kind of cold. Oh, that's true. But don't forget to dress warm for the weather now that it's changing, pioneers. I know. Burr, I love you, my sweaters. Me too. <laughs> Let's see what student life has to say. Hi, Xavier and Nadia. Here with student life, we have Garrett, Axel, and Moses. Hi. Hi. They're here with the pets today, and they're going to show us and talk about them. So I'll go first with Axel. What pet do you have today? I have uh, Boots the Cat. He was born on May 28th, 2020. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Um, Axel, how, um, what's your name? <laughs> okay. Um, nice. Okay. Garrett, I see you have a dog. Yeah, um, I got a dog. Uh, I like okay. dogs, man. Catch her better. Anyway, okay. Um, what's her name or him? Um, it's a girl, and her name is Snickers. That's a nice name. I like. How long have you had her? Um, I've had her for like less than a year. I don't even know where I got her. I just like she was in the house one day. Found her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Okay. Dogs um, are all okay, lighter. <laughs> okay, Moises, what do you have? I have Jerry here. Yeah. Jerry, was that? Jerry, yes. And I've had him for like 10 months. He was born in like December 15. And yeah, he's a shit too. He's a little guy. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have two cats. One's a. Yeah. I have her. And then I have. See? This one. The one that Xavier like, because... Dogs are better. Well, what, what's it? Like, what? uh, dogs are better. Uh, See? Okay. Cats are better. Cats are better. We forgot to do Moises. We did? Yeah. Yes. yeah. I think that wraps up student lives, so back to you guys. Yay. Okay. Aw, those animals are so cute. I know. Thank you, Nadia and Xavier, for showing us the cutest pets. 
Hi, my name is Adam Tompkins. I'm the Assistant Principal of Student Services at Mount Whitney, and I'm here to answer some questions. Uh, question number one, with how, many, how large the pandemic is, when do you think you'll be able to return to school, if at all? You know, that question's really hard, um, considering that as of right now on um, November 18th, we're still in the purple. Um, and, and to be quite honest, and just from personal, my personal thought is I, I you know, they keep on saying March maybe um, of 2021. It's just kind of hard to, uh, there's so many little moving parts that it just, I feel like these moving parts just can make, keep making it harder and harder and harder for us to come back. So as of right now, it's really hard for me to see as, as a high school educator. I mean, I think about it just moving from classes to classes and uh, to, from um, just, you know, kids are kids. They're going to want to talk, shake hands, say, you know, say what up to their homies. And um, that spread is just going to happen. We had one little program you know, here, our Tulare County program, and, you know, they had to go back already because just all it takes is one family member to, in one of those homes to get COVID and it, you know, everyone puts everyone in quarantine. So it's kind of hard to say. Is contacting parents easier or harder now? Uh, you know, to be honest with you, parents have always been so hard to contact. Um, a lot of your guys' numbers in power school are not up to date, not accurate, mailboxes are full. Um, you know, you t think taking into consideration that many of our parents here speak Spanish. And like for me personally, I don't speak Spanish. So I have to, on top of just trying to contact your parent, I have to go to my secretary and ask her to help or talk to, you know, you know, three out of the five of my counselors can speak Spanish. So luckily I have them, but even then it's really hard to get a hold of you guys because, um, and the parents, I, so is it harder now? I wouldn't say, I would say no, it's still hard. Um, the funny thing is, is that though a lot of people, a lot of people are getting better about communicating via email. Um, so some parents are a little bit more hands-on, they understand what's going on and how, how much these students are struggling right now. And so they're uh, quicker to call. But on the flip side, um, our district is sending out, you know, calls for every, from every school, elementary to high school and their meal services, board meetings, you name it, um, those are all, Parents are getting bombarded with it, so when they see that, if I sell a unified number, they some of them even just kind of, I think now, actually, so I guess in the grand scheme of things, I think it's a little bit harder, so. How are you seeing the current circumstances affect students' grades? Um, to be honest, the kids are struggling, and um, they're definitely going down, and it's not a result of the teachers. I mean, uh, you know, I've been to houses where there's seven kids in Zoom, you know, in a one-bedroom apartment. Um, how I, it's just not a learning environment that is conducive for I don't I wouldn't even call it a learning environment it's just not an environment conducive to learning um, and and a lot of this material like is difficult on its own then having to navigate this on your own at home on a computer it's just extremely difficult and online is really just a system that is built for certain people um, certain people do really well in that structure um, but just most of our kids don't have the time management skills just yet, not saying that they won't ever, but time management and just um, ability to do a lot of this on their own. And so, um, you know, and some kids are thriving, some, there are some that are doing the best they've ever done because they're, you know, take away all the distractions that high school has to offer, whether it be sports, drama, band, or just drama among kids, like outside of social, me social media. Some kids are thriving, but for the mo large majority of them, they're struggling. Um, and I can say that even for my own kids. Um, that are my twins that are five entering school and it's it's a struggle to get them to want to sit in a chair and watch you know zoom for god knows how long and then also uh, on the flip side do that asynchronous work but it, it's just it's just very difficult we're not seeing anyone um you know the next question is about whether or not we're f uh seeing people physically in our counseling office we aren't um our school's shut down and so um you know we do have our a couple teachers here and there, and and some you know some of our special ed para professionals and some of our clerical staff. They're kind of coming through the office, you know, our counseling office, just to touch base. But even then, that's you know socially distanced, and you know you don't talk very long. I don't have my mask on right now, but if anyone walks in the office, I'm, I instantly like you know if they open the door, I instantly put it on. But for the most part, I mean everything. Uh, meetings to parents happen on Zoom. Uh, meetings with our kids are happening on zoom phone calls um even even text messages via google voice um remind that's how most of our contact is coming in with our kids right now um 
and so we miss the kids being here it kind of um, and I guess this kind of goes into the next question it says how have you adjusted to the new school format among other teachers um, and I'm saying that we're all kind of getting adjusted to it we're just not happy with the adjustment um, you know if you ask your teachers you ask you know counselors here you ask the APs you ask principal Hamilton you ask the secretaries we're all in this position because we love kids and so it's been a struggle I mean, at least for me, and I know I'm speaking for like at least some of my counselors, it's like we got into this business to um, because people and educators made an impact on our life and we had an experience in school that we wanted to um, give to you guys. And so when we take the kids out of this format, because I mean, really, it's it's kind of one of those things where it's it's not out of sight, out of mind, because we, we know that you guys are struggling and we're trying our best to help you. But um, I don't know, it feels much more like a business. Um, and, and not always the most efficient one, to be frank. And so um, it's been a hard adjustment. I mean, our job is still, you know, we're still dealing with kids, you know, with class changes and we're still, you know, um, you know, the social emotional factor, like if kids need someone to talk to, we're always here for them. And so that hasn't really necessarily changed. It's just the in-person just kind of, you know, I don't know. I heard somewhere, I don't know if it was in a sermon or if it was on a TED Talks or what have you, but it's just like, you know, humans are meant to connect with others, like meaning like we're meant to have those conversations, have interaction. We're always looking for that connected connectedness. And that's been a little difficult right now. And so um, the adjustment is hard on all of us. And um, I don't know, we miss you guys. Um and just hope that, you know, this is a phase that we're going to get through and just know that you're, you guys aren't the only ones going through all this. And the teachers, I remind teachers that every day. I have to remind myself every day that um, what we're going through, many, you know, people across the world are going through. And so it's just something that is going to make us stronger in the long run. And so I just hope that you guys keep working hard and keep positive attitude. So peace. Great question, Isaac and David. Thank you so much for joining us today. As much as I would love to talk about all these questions, we have to wrap up the show. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you do not miss out on any of our other videos. Also, make sure to follow us on our Twitter at MWHS Video. Until next time. This has been your Pioneer Report. Bye, guys. Great questions, Isaac and David. My phone went off. I know. <gasps> okay. Wow, there's so much amazing. Aw, those animals are so cute. I know. Thank you, Nadia and Xavier, for the for showing. I know. Thank you, Nadia and Xavier, for I showing. Wish you could. <laughs> I was like this. Great. But it's okay. It's a okay. It's okay, shouty. Mm -hmm. Aww. See, this is like the fourth time we've recorded this. Like, the bloopers are going to be so boring because yesterday's bloopers were hilarious. Like, we did a whole American Idol show. Mm -hmm. We should recreate it. How about you be the singer and I'll be the musician? Musician? Okay. <laughs> yes, yeah. Let's marry our daughters. Comment down below if you think Christmas trees can go up November 1st. My house isn't even decorated. My house isn't either, but Miss Perez, on the other hand. I know, I saw her on the Zoom call and there's a Christmas tree in the background. <laughs> Miss Perez, we love you, but it's a little bit early. Like, I would, I do the, 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 the okay. Yet. Well, you gotta give the turkey some recognition, but you have to wait till at least the day after Thanksgiving and then I'll decorate. My Christmas tree will be up.